Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Marion. I'm glad you called. I'm sorry, Angel. I'm all jammed up. Mm-hmm. Some boy just came to see me with a proposition I couldn't possibly turn down. If we work it right, it may mean a killing. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves The Case of the Handy Helpmate. It is late afternoon in New York, and at the Miramar, a cheap hotel on the Bowery, one citizen finds release from the cares of the day. But the sound effects annoy Chuck Lewis, and when Chuck is annoyed, he does something about it. All right, Tony. Get up. Uh, Let me alone. Come on, bum. Get out of my room. I ain't bothering anybody. You're bothering me. That you, Willie? Yeah. Where the devil have you been? I just went out with some air. Oh, you just went... Well, what are you hanging around for, Tony? I told you to get lost. Someone would think you own a joint. What did you say? Nothing. He's a wise guy, that Tony. I wouldn't let him get away with it, Chuck. No? What would you do? Well, what's the matter, pal? Everything rubs you the wrong way. Yeah, maybe this will make you feel better. Where'd you get that bottle? I got friends. You raise any dough? No, I never saw such a bunch of tight wads in my life. Come here a second. Huh? I said come here. Now, look, Chuck... What's the matter? Don't you understand English? Uh, oh, cut it out. Now empty your pockets. Huh? Quit stalling. Turn them inside out. Oh, listen... Are you going to do like I say? Look, Chuck, uh, I don't want you to think of that... you little rat. So you're holding out of me, huh? No, honest, I was going to split. Now, I... where'd you get this C-note? Hey. I found it. You're lying. Oh! Where'd you get it? You remember Marty Braddock? How could I forget? If I ever lay my hands on it. Hey, wait a minute. You trying to tell me you ran into Marty? No, but I met his missus. Julie? Yeah. Well, what do you know? It must have been real tickled to see you. What'd you do? Follow her home? Yeah, I put the bite on her. Yeah. Marty must be doing okay if his wife can shell out a hundred clams. <laughs> Leave it to Marty. He's got a job at the Belmont Bank. He what? You know what I was figuring, Chuck? I bet he wouldn't mind a touch now and then to keep his old friends happy. Oh, you jerk. Is that all you can think of? Huh? Where's your imagination? Marty working for a bank? You expect me to be satisfied with a couple of bucks? Now, if you said a couple of thousand, that would be different. I don't get you. No, but Marty will. Get my coat. We're going bye-bye. Yes, sir? Can I help you? Uh, yes. Can you break this bill? Well, certainly. How would you like it? Oh, five, five, ones will be fine. Five, one, two, three. Uh, you, Marty Braddock... Yes, that's right. I wonder if you could spare me a few minutes. My name is Mike Waring. Well, I'm very busy, Mr. Well, that's all Waring. Right. I... Bank is one of my clients. Uh, just close your window. Really, Mr. Waring, that's I... That's okay. It's official business. Suppose we go into Sinclair's office. Sure. Uh, better come around this way. May I ask what this is all about? You'll find out. I hope Mr. Sinclair isn't annoyed with me. Not yet, anyway. All right, sit down. Thanks. I don't know if you're familiar with what I do for the bank. Well, no, I... Well, I'm a private detective. One of my duties is to check personnel. I see. On the course of events, I sent your fingerprints to the FBI. I guess you know what they told me. Yes, I guess I do. Your application here doesn't mention anything about you serving five to ten for armed robbery back in 1945. All right, Waring, I won't take up any more of your time. Now, just a minute. What for? I've heard the spiel 20 times. I'm awfully sorry, Braddock, but naturally we can't afford to have an ex-con working for us. Isn't that how it goes? No, don't blame me. I'm just an innocent bystander. When did you get out? 
What difference does it make? Oh, just humor me. In 49. What have you been doing since? Getting kicked all over the place. You really been trying to go straight? Would you believe it if I said yes? Who knows? Look, if you get your kicks torturing people, that's swell, but I don't think I have... No, 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 I'm really interested. Well, I... I was 19 when I pulled that job in Buffalo. It was the only crooked thing I ever did. I threw in with a couple of boys. Yeah, I know, named... named Chuck Lewis and Willie Frank. How did you know? It's all down here. I see you're married. Yeah, three years ago. Has your wife known? Everything. I met her before I was sent up. And she waited? Yes. Well, sounds like quite a girl. How is she going to take this? The way she's been taking it all along, she won't complain. Look, Braddock, um, if I were to forget about this for a while... What? Could I trust you not to make me sorry? Listen, Waring, if you give me this break, I swear you'll never regret it. I hope not. Okay, fella, get back to work. All right, Willie. What do you got to say for yourself? Where's Marty? I swear that's where he works, Chuck. Funny, we didn't see him come out. Everybody else seen Yeah? Him. Well, what do you make of that? Okay, Willie. You wait here in the alley. You ain't gonna pull anything. Just wait. If you see anybody, sing out. Hey, buddy. Yeah? You got a match? Sure. Here, keep the book. Yeah. You always were a sport. Hmm? What's the matter, Marty? Don't you recognize me? No. I must have gained a few pounds. Chuck Lewis. <laughs> so you didn't forget. What are you doing here? The question is, what are you doing here? Since when do they employ ex-cons in banks? I don't work there. Ain't the way I heard it. Look, I don't care what you heard. Get out of my way. Take it easy, pal. You'll last longer. Know what I mean? So you still pack a gun, huh? You won't believe this, Marty, but this one's a present from your missus. What? Of course, in all fairness to Julie, she didn't know how we were going to spend the money. We? Oh, I forgot to mention, there's another friend of yours around. Willie Frank. Look, Chuck. to that alley. You're not going to get away with this. You're not going to get away with this. If I had a buck for every time I heard that, I could retire. Hey, Willie. Look who's here. Hiya, Marty. What are you fellas up to? We're going back in business. No, we're not. Well, you certainly wouldn't want the bank to find out they got an ex-con on the payroll. They know it already. Well, then that alters the case somewhat, but not enough. We're going to teach them it's not right to put temptation in your way. Now, me and Willie got a little plan. I'm not interested. Suppose I put it to you like this. <laughs> what did you do? Keep out of the shoe. All right, Galahad, on your feet. You gonna cooperate? No. I say you will. You wouldn't want anything to happen to your missus. What? As I recall, you're awfully sweet on that dame. I wonder if you'd like her as much if she had her face carved up. So help me, Chuck. If you touch Julie, I'll kill you. Oh, don't make me laugh. <laughs> now get this and get it straight. You're gonna play ball. Otherwise, you'll go home one night and find your wife a mess. He means it, Marty. You're gonna join the team? Yeah. yeah. That's a spirit. Now get on home. We wouldn't want Julie to get nervous about you. You know how little it takes to make some women worry. Is that you, darling? Yeah. Let me take you. It's all right, Julie. What happened? Nothing. How can you say that? Sit down. I'm going to call Dr. No, Wolf. no. But look at I you. I tell you, I'm all right. You're not. I've got a right to know what happened. I ran into a couple of old friends. Chuck and Willie? Yeah. It was my fault. If I'd been careful, Willie never would have followed me. How could you have even known he was in town? Julie, they want me to throw in with him again. You wouldn't. No? What do you suggest? They can't make any trouble for you. They can make you. plenty. 
But Mr. Waring knows about your record. Yes, but the bank doesn't. If Willie and Chuck went to the powers that be, I'd be out in the street in five minutes. No, you wouldn't. Look, who are we kidding? Can't you see old Sinclair's reaction when he learned he's got an ex-con in his temple of finance? It'd be the same old story all over again. All right, then you'll quit the job. Well, that won't satisfy Chuck. He said if I didn't cooperate, he'd... He'd what? Never mind. Did he threaten you? I've got a right to know. Yeah. Julie, what are we going to do? You're going to do absolutely nothing. But... There are no buts about it. You leave it to me, darling. I'll think of something. Take it easy. You want to bust my eardrum? Well, how about a little service here? You want service? Try to Waldorf. Tony, how would you like me to come downstairs and give you a punch in the nose? Hey, who is this? Chuck Lewis. Oh. What's the matter, Chuck? Can't you take a joke? No. You see Willie Frank around? No, I ain't seen him all day. Well, when he comes in, you tell him I want to... Never mind. I think that's him. Oh! Oh, what was that? Hey, Chuck! Hello, Mike. Uh, Sergeant Corbett. <laughs> that brings you down to my little nest. What always brings me down? You. Why, Sergeant, I never dreamed you cared. You know, what's on your mind? You do some work for the Belmont Bank, don't you? That's right. How you doing there? They're satisfied. Guess it doesn't take much, huh? What are you talking about? Well, I thought it was your job to investigate all their employees. So? So you slipped up kind of badly. Did you know they had an ex-con on the payroll? No. You're lying. Now, look, Corbett. If you're referring to Marty Braddock... Uh-huh. Well, I figured the guy deserved a brace. So you destroyed the report. How did you know that? Because I was down at the bank to see Mr. Braddock. One of his old associates was just knocked off. A feller named Chuck Lewis. No. I'm telling you, yes. And you think that Marty... I think it's highly suspicious Mr. Braddock didn't show up for work today. Well, what does his wife say? I haven't seen her yet. You mind if I join you? I insist on it. After all, when you did your good deed for Braddock, you paved the way for murder. All right, Boy Scout, let's go. As spring comes to America, all over the country, folks will be taking to the highway in their cars. That's part of the fun of owning a car, getting out on the road in the springtime and seeing the countryside. But when a lot of people get the same idea at the same time, it means crowded traffic conditions and increased danger. If you'd like to be safe, recognize what those dangers are. Speed, drink, and carelessness. Just drive carefully. The life you save may be your own. <laughs> Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Twenty minutes have passed since Sergeant Corbett apprised Mike of the murder of Chuck Lewis. And now we find the two at the apartment of Marty Braddock, whom the sergeant is sponsoring as chief suspect. Well, looks like nobody's home. Well, what'd you expect? Well, maybe we better go in. Yes, I was just going to suggest that. Allow me. But five will get you... What are you, you doing there? Huh? If you don't get away from that door, I'll call the police. Well, you won't have far to travel. This gent is one of them. You Julie Braddock? Yes. Well, this is Sergeant Corbett. My name is Mike Waring. Oh. So you're the one. Yeah, he's the one. Well, uh, what are you gentlemen doing here? Well, I think we better discuss that inside. What's wrong? Well, what makes you think anything is wrong? Did something happen to Marty? No, but something will. Where is he? That's what we'd like to know. I don't understand. Now, you better sit down, Julie. You've got to tell me. Did you ever hear of a man named Chuck Lewis? No. 
You're lying, Angel. I swear I didn't. Well, you should have. He was one of your husband's fraternity brothers. You leave my husband out of this. No, we can't. Chuck Lewis was murdered this afternoon. And you think Marty did? Yes. You're crazy. Then why did he disappear? Who says he did? Well, he didn't show up for work. Well, maybe he went over to see his brother in Jersey. Oh, don't make me laugh. He could have. His brother had a heart attack last week. Maybe he took a turn for the worse. And Marty didn't say anything to you about it? He doesn't like to worry me. Just a real solicitous kid, ain't he? I swear that's the truth. Well, we'll see how it hits a jury. They can't hold him, can they, Mr. Waring? Well, that all depends. Was Marty in touch with Chuck? No. It'll be easy enough to find out. I give you my word, Marty hasn't seen him since he was sent up. Well, then how do you account for the fact we found your husband's business card on Chuck's body? That was my fault. I was in touch with him. Come again? I was out shopping last week and I ran into Willie Frank. Willie Frank? Yes, he was a friend of Chuck's. I gave him some money. But Marty knew nothing about it. Do you expect us to believe that? He had no motive. Oh, yes, he had. Suppose Chuck was in touch with your husband. Suppose he threatened to go to the bank and tell him of Marty's past record. After all, this was Marty's big chance. He'd be peeved with anyone who tried to ruin it. I tell you, Marty didn't kill him. Well, then who did? Me. What? You heard me. I did it. You realize what you're saying? Yes. I went to that place where he was living this afternoon. I went in through the rear entrance. There's one right on... off third. Did anyone see you? No. Now, you're not buying this, are you, Mike? Well, it's an easy way to check. What did you do with the gun? I threw it in a sewer. Where? I can't remember. But it was somewhere along the bar. Now, that's a hot one. Why won't you believe me? Because it's obvious you're shielding your husband. Yes, it was a nice try, Mrs. Braddock, but I'm holding out for Marty. And since I can't depend on you to notify me when he comes in, I'll have a couple of boys downstairs who will. Hello? Hello, is that you, Waring? Yeah, who's this? This is Marty Braddock. What? Listen, Waring, I want to talk to you. Well, that makes us even, because I want to talk to you. I'll meet you at your apartment in 20 minutes. No, no, let's make it someplace else. There are a couple of squad cars parked in front of my door. I got a hunch there's something wrong. Something is. Where are you now? Did anything happen to my wife? No. You swear? Yep. Okay, I'm in a drugstore on the corner of 12th and 4th Avenue. All right, walk down to the corner of 12th and 5th. I'll come by in a blue Nash. Don't stop to admire the color. Just hop in. All right, Waring, what's up? What makes you think anything is up? There's too much hocus-pocus going on. What are the cops staked out in front of my house for? They're looking for you. Why? Don't you know? If I did, I wouldn't ask. Well, a friend of yours named Chuck Lewis met a violent end today. You mean he was murdered? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, who did it? Well, right now, the police are inclined to give you the honor. I swear I didn't do it. Why didn't you report for work this morning? I was on my way when I got a call from my brother's doc. He wasn't feeling so hot. So you went over to Jersey to see him? That's right. Without notifying Julie? Well, she was out shopping. So you didn't even think of leaving a note? I was too excited. Look, it's easy easy enough to prove. What what time was Chuck killed? 1.15. Well, you can check with my brother. I was there from 10.30 to 3.00. Was anybody else with you? No. I don't suppose your brother would mind perjuring himself to save your life. You've got to believe me. I tell you, I didn't kill him. Well, then that makes it look worse for Julie. What are you talking about? Well, I forgot to mention it, but uh, she confessed. She what? She claims she killed Chuck. Why, she's crazy. She didn't even know he was in town. She says she ran into Willie Frank one day who relayed the happy tidings. You don't believe that? Can't you see what she's trying to do? I got an idea. Look, look, Mr. Waring, I was lying. I, I did know Chuck was around. He he, he wanted me to throw in with him again. I, I was supposed to give him my answer today. So? So I, I... I gave it to him with a gun. You got the gun now? No. No, I... Uh, I, I got rid of it. Where? I, I threw it in the river. What about this alibi of yours? It's a phony. I had it all set with my brother in advance. Listen, Waring, you've got to believe me. Julie knew nothing about this. Well, if you say so. What's the matter? Don't you believe me? What I believe doesn't matter. 
The man you've got to convince is Sergeant Corbett. I'll arrange for you to have a crack at him. story, Sergeant. I killed Chuck Lewis. Julie had nothing to do with it. Okay, that's good enough for me. You're going to let her go now, aren't you? Yeah, well, I'll think about it. All right, Haskell, take him away. Right, Sergeant. Will you do me a favor, Waring? Uh, sure, Marty. And... Tell Julie not to worry. Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. <laughs> now, that's what I call an optimist. Well, don't tell me you believe that confession. Well, I certainly do. What about his wife's? Well, her motive was obvious. She was trying to protect him. And he's trying to do the same for her. Oh, you're crazy. Well, how do you get around his alibi? What alibi? He admits he set it up in advance with his brother. You notice there was no one else around to substantiate the story. Well, I'm not satisfied. Sure, because you hate to admit this is all your fault. If you had notified the bank of his past record, none of this would have happened. Well, I thought he deserved a break. And he's going to get it. Right in the neck. Now, wait a minute. Aren't we forgetting someone? Who? Willie Frank. What about him? Why couldn't Willie have killed Chuck? Well, why should he? Well, Chuck was a bully boy. Maybe Willie got fed up taking it. Oh, he's been palling around with the guy for 13 years, and now suddenly he gets fed up. <laughs> How convenient. Well, I still think it bears investigating. Well, you go ahead and investigate, Mr. Waring. I wouldn't stop you for the world. I got my boy right here. <laughs> All right, come on, Willie, get up. Wake up, boy, you're late for reveille. Now rise and shine. Oh, cut it out, Chuck. Surprise, it ain't Chuck. Uh, huh? Who are you? The name is Waring, Mike Waring. You're the one they call the Falcon? Why, can you think of something worse to call me? Come on, get up. Uh, what for? I ain't got no place. I say you are. Ow! Leave me alone. I bet you missed that treatment since Chuck is gone. What do you know about his murder? You're nothing. They tell me you weren't around when he was killed. That's right. Where did you disappear to? None of your business. Don't give me that, you punk. Where were you? I don't remember. You don't remember. I must have been loaded. What did you have to celebrate? Chuck's death? What do you remember? Nothing. And you can't be sure you didn't kill him. Listen, mister, you got no right to come in here and push me around. Who do you think you are, anyway? You said it yourself. I'm the falcon. Now get dressed. We're going places. Oh, that you, Haskell? No, it's only me, Sergeant. And look what I found. All right, you inside. Oh, let me go. Hey, what do you got there? Wish I could think of a suitable name. At the moment, it calls itself Willie Frank. Well, why did you bring him down for? Because this is where he belongs. Don't you, Willie? I don't know what you're talking about. Neither do I. Well, if you had done a little investigating, as I suggested, you'd have discovered that Willie has no recollection of what he was doing at the time Chuck was murdered. Well, I have. Huh? You should have asked me. Willie spent the day right here. He was picked up for vagrancy at 11 a.m. But if he was in jail, he couldn't have killed Chuck. No, he couldn't. You know, you surprise me, Mike. I didn't think the one and only Falcon could fall flat on his face twice in one day. <laughs> but you did it, didn't you, boy? <laughs> now beat it. I got work to do. Can you stop in time? Ask yourself that question the next time you drive your car. If the car in front of you should jam on his brakes to avoid a stray dog, if a child should dash across an intersection, if a tire should blow out, could you stop in time to save a life? Traffic accidents and death rates are still extremely high. Although improved conditions have brought about a 38% reduction in the overall traffic accident toll, more than 30,000 people will lose their lives in traffic accidents this year. So be careful. Accidents don't always happen to the other fellow. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Ten minutes have passed since Mike Waring was informed that Willie Frank, his nominee for the murder of Chuck Lewis, was turned down. 
And now Mike goes to break the news to the surviving candidate. All right, Haskell, here's my pass. Open him up. Right, Mike. Where are you? Hello, Marty. Did you see Julie? Nope, not yet. You've got to get her out. They promised to release her. Well, that's kind of impossible. You see, they never arrested her in the first place. They did? No. Sergeant Corbett never believed her confession. So you held out on me? Well, you held out on me. Why didn't you tell me you decided to throw in with Chuck and Willie? I wasn't going to. You're lying. All right, so I was. There was nothing else I could do. And you intended to go through with that holdup? Yes. Look, I, I know I know you think I let you down, but I couldn't help myself. Couldn't you? No, it, it wasn't that I cared about the job or myself. I was afraid for Julie. Chuck threatened to go to work on her. Did she know that? No. Listen, Waring, the cops won't bother her anymore, will they? Not as long as you stick to that story that you killed, Chuck. Then why shouldn't I? On the other hand, why should you? Okay, Marty, maybe someday I'll figure out the reason. Hey, Haskell, I want out. Hello, Julie. Mr. War Waring. You, uh, remember Sergeant Corbett? Of course. Hi. Where's my husband? Right where he belongs. You've got no right to hold him. He didn't kill Chuck. And he claims he did. He's lying. He's trying to protect me. I did it. What did you do with the gun? I told you I dropped it in a sewer somewhere along the bower. Oh, haven't we been through all this before? Yes, but this time, pay a little more attention. Detail a squad to make a search. What are you babbling about? She's telling the truth. Of course I am. Have you gone crazy, Mike? No, she did kill Chuck. Then you believe me? Yes, I do. Though I'd give the world not to. Well, come on. We'll take you down to headquarters. Hey, you want to stop somewhere for a beer, Mike? No, thanks, Sergeant. I don't feel like celebrating. Why not? You solved the case. Yeah, well, I'm almost sorry I did. I'd have given anything if I could have proved that Julie Braddock didn't kill Chuck. Why did she do it anyway? Well, she told the truth all along. She was crazy about her husband, and she thought Chuck represented the source of danger to him, so she put him away. Uh, it seems hard to believe. Well, your boys found the gun in the sewer along the Bowery. Yeah, yeah. That was the item that convinced me. What convinced you? Marty's confession. Well, it was no worse than hers. Oh, yes, it was. He admitted to me that in order to protect Julie, he agreed to throw in with Chuck and Willie and sticking up the bank. So? So, that was his way of handling the matter. To him, it was the lesser of two evils. If he'd planned to go through with the hold-up, he certainly wouldn't have killed Chuck. The only reason he made that confession was because he knew Julie was guilty. I know this uh, doesn't sound official, but I hope the jury goes real easy on her. Aren't many dames around that would do what she did? No, and let's hope we don't run into another for quite a spell, because what this one did was murder. Well, good night, Sergeant. The Case of the Jumping Jack. The Case of the Jumping Jack. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon, when Mike Waring learns that when some jacks jump to conclusions, the results can be murder. The adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon starred as the Falcon with Chuck Webster as Sergeant Corbett. This program came from New York. Fred Collins speaking. Thank you.